Hey everybody, Kim uh, and Jed here with you today. Today. It's Friday, it's rainy, we had a huge thunderstorm last night. It was intense. It was kind of scary. Actually. A little triggering. It's a little triggery. <laughs> they were also doing some, uh, jets were flying over doing some training and that like fighter jets were fly like literally flying and circling over our church. So that was yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, uh, we wanted to give you a, a Friday update. Last week I talked to you about Yaroslav and Volba, about their health, mm -hmm. about the, maybe their labs were mixed up or whatever. Anyway, the good news is neither one of them has a super low hemoglobin. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody out there has a super low hemoglobin. It's not our boys. Yaroslav just has low iron, so we're starting him on that. Mm -hmm. And we went with him to the neurologist. We did EEG. He has epilepsy. I don't know if I already said that. And trying to up his meds a little bit. So we're on the road to recover. Well, to health. Health with them. Still no appointment for PKU. I mean, not till July no. for Boba, which is a little sad. But that's kind of how it is here in Germany, mm. in many areas. <laughs> Bureaucracy. <laughs> um, so the boys are fine. Wanted you to know that. Yeah. Um, kids have, you know, all of our kids here, teenagers and everybody, have been going to a local school. They've had all the Ukrainians, not just our kids, but like other Ukrainian kids that have um, fled to this city, this area. They've all had, they've had them all like in one room, just together, um, trying to teach them German. Ages like fifth grade through 10th grade all together. And now they're just deciding like it's time to get them more integrated into the school. Mm. But there's no space. No space. And now there's like a massive teacher shortage here. And no schools want to take them. Mm. <laughs> so it's been like Evie, uh, we put her on a waiting list to go to kindergarten like Right when we got here, there's like 200 kids on the waiting list. Like there's no space for her to go to a preschool at all. Um, but then, so, but this week, Hava, our Hava who came back from the U.S., she started to go to seventh grade German school. So this is her third, seven, this is her third classroom in one school year, third country. Started out the school year in Ukraine, sixth grade, went to, came here to Germany and was in that big group of kids. Then went to the U.S. and did seventh grade U.S. school. I think only for like two days. And then came back here and now she's doing German seventh grade. So Ukrainian schools are so hard, so difficult that she's, they're putting her in a year ahead here. So she doesn't understand anything, but there's a girl in her class who speaks Russian. So she'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. She's um, a smart girl. And then like. Another kid in our group, Nazar, he started another school today, no. but like he's a 10th grader and they put him in 8th grade because the 9th and 10th graders are doing end of the year testing. So there's like, for our, we have like a bunch of 10th graders and there's like no option for them because no. this should be the end of their schooling in Germany. No. Next, they would go to like a vocational school, but the vocational schools aren't accepting Ukrainians. No. So there's literally no educational option for them. At this point. We'll At see this point. God forbid we're still here in the fall. Yeah. Because then we have to figure all that out. We're just like, it's fine. It's the end of the school year. Whatever. But we met with the principal today. And he's a great guy. And that's what we're finding. Like You can be frustrated with bureaucracy and system. The, the system challenges. But... You know, when you sit down across the table and talk with the principal and you realize he's just trying to do, he's made up his own little version because there's nothing within the system. There's no way to support uh, the students. And so he's come up with his own little, like. His son is teaching it. You know, like he's, he's just trying yeah. his best because he said, everybody else just says no. Yeah. Like we don't know how to do it, so we won't do it. And he no. said, I'm just trying to yeah. do what I think would be best for the kids. So we're super appreciate him. so while the system and bureaucracy says there's there's no college there's no training there's no anything we'll see what happens we're just going to take a day at a time and 
fish in the but, dark. That's what the principal said. Yeah. He's just fishing in the dark. But so. it is hard. I mean, when you have like little kids, like, okay, Evie doesn't get to go to preschool. Oh, well. Yep. Or like little Timofei, who's here in our group. He's in third grade and he's in school. Yep. But when you get to like these 16 year olds yep. who are like finishing school, this is a terrible time for them to be yep. in a different system. This was a terrible time to uh, start a war, Russia. Yeah. Terrible time. <laughs> not funny <laughs> it's a terrible time why am i laughing um yeah so that's that with the kids at schools mm -hmm. next on mon well monday is like a big anticipated day may 9th it's supposed to be some big announcement from russia yeah that's well, just their victory day parade and putin's really into numbers he loves his dates and his is tank parades. So we've been just kind of waiting. A lot of people, I think, are kind of holding their breath for May 9th to see what he's going to say. Is he going to declare full-on war? Is he going to say... I'm really sorry. I'd like to go <laughs> home now. Is he going to retire? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but home. we can't uh, really look forward to the future until we know what's going to happen yeah. on that day or before that day. Um, Jed's going to head to Ukraine. Yeah. So on May 9th, we decided, we told the team, like, you know, these first two months, we're going to take it a month at a time. And then after that, we're going to have to plan further and, and make a plan. So the evening of May 9th, when we see what has transpired within that day, we'll have a clear picture about what comes next. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're going to sit down and talk about the next three months, uh, and so, yeah, we're going to do that. And then that evening, I'll start driving with, um, so we're connected with Vineyard Churches, uh, a lot of churches, but Vineyard Churches has been our, uh, our family of church. Um, and so they have a new overseer for Ukraine for the U.S. Vineyards, and Joel Lowry will be coming, and I'm going to take him to Ukraine. We're going to do some travel around to see some of the projects that we're doing as well as some of the churches around the country yeah, yeah. and then there's also some more people from our group who are going to leave then and head back to ukraine yeah. so things are kind of shifting here for us um mm -hmm. but if jed if may 9th goes badly which i feel like everybody kind of thinks that it will yeah. um if Jed goes to Ukraine and it's pretty clear that we're not going to be able to go back there anytime soon, mm. then we have to figure out as a group, like what comes next? Because realistically, we cannot continue to live in this church altogether. Yeah. I mean, be on top of each other, 40 people all needing a bathroom and one shower waiting for. And it's just like, yeah. it's just not sustainable. I mean, yes, we can do it. But will we have relationship at the end of the time? Our extrovert has become an introvert. <laughs> I'm an extrovert and I'm like, I just need some alone time. <laughs> there's literally, there's no privacy um, for people. Um, it's just having to plan all the meals for this huge yeah. group all the time. Um, it's a lot easier if it's in smaller groups. And for our guys, like they've done amazingly yeah. well. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. But... There's, they're also not going to thrive yeah. in this environment. Yeah. There's if been we just, some regression. Yeah. In yeah. Each of them in their own ways. People who used to be able to use the toilet because they always knew where it was and they knew how to go to it and right. could access it easily are now just using diapers because yeah. they don't know how to get to the toilet. Where's the toilet? Yeah. There's so many people around that not everybody is in tuned to like, Hey, we need to take this person to the toilet. It's just, there's so many people. Yeah. Um, we yeah. really need to get into a more family style environment, but that yeah. is really not yeah. easy yeah. because of how many people in our group need care as opposed to how many people can care for them. Yep. Yeah. The um, numbers don't add up. Yeah, for a and, long term. and we have to, like, we're legally responsible for all the guys, yet we can't live with all of them because we also have a billion children. So if a we... Li literally a billion. If we lived with all the people we're responsible for, 
I mean, there'd be like 15 people. 15? 13. No. 11 dependents and you and me. And that's more. Plus we have Nina's 13. kids. 14, 15, 16. I mean, it would be 16 of us living all together, which is not an improvement <laughs> because then we would need help to take care of the boys. Yep. So then, I mean, we might as well all just stay in the church. Yep. So we have to figure out how to separate people, what's sustainable, mm -hmm. find a place where we're near each other. We can't be across town because no, almost nobody mm -hmm. can drive. What we need is a house in a village with a garden. Maybe a couple houses. <laughs> we maybe, need a duplex in a house. <laughs> maybe in, in Ukraine. <laughs> in a village, yeah. That's what we need. That's what we want. Or yeah. just an empty hotel. Yeah. It'd have to be a big hotel. I don't even know. It seems impossible. But living here maybe with room for service. like three... <laughs> Living here service. for three more months also seems impossible. Like, it's, I mean, I know that there are people who are living in way worse situations. I'm aware of that. I'm super thankful yeah. for what we have. Yeah. It doesn't mean that. It's sustainable. It's sustainable for us. And, like, our we had a meeting with our board yeah. back in the States this week, and they were like, don't keep living in an unsustainable atmosphere or environment just because you hope you get to go home like mm. if we make a plan for a better place to live that suits our needs better yeah. and then we get to leave sooner than we thought great yeah. but just staying in this situation just because we hope we won't have to doesn't really make sense yeah. even though we're super thankful to this church i don't want to sound ungrateful no, no they've been great i'm just extroverted out for the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering, why didn't we do like, be, why didn't we be refugees to Fiji? <laughs> the little huts little on huts, the beach. Little huts on the beach. <laughs> no, bungalows. There's people that are missionaries to Fiji. That would be beautiful. We could do, why, maybe Hawaii? I think our boys, the sea air would be really Not therapeutic. The sea. They need the ocean. The ocean air would be really yeah. therapeutic for them. Yeah. So we're just going to do a GoFundMe to get us to Fiji. <laughs> Stan. I also was like, hey, we're in Europe. Let's take our boys to Euro Disney. <laughs> like, that's like my dream. That's but my then like, our team was like, I think that we'd all feel really bad if we went to Euro Disney. Yeah. While there's a war happening in Ukraine. You just can't enjoy stuff like you normally would yeah. when you know that there's so much suffering happening yeah. um yeah. but someday i'm taking bmo to euro disney and i don't care what anybody says even if it's just the two of us yeah which would be amazing i wonder if they have frog legs there instead of turkey legs As a, put him. <laughs> sorry anyway that's what's happening <laughs> i feel like this is a dumb video yeah. Pray for Jed's trip back. Yeah. Pray for Ukraine. Yeah. Pray for wisdom for us. Pray mm. for open hearted people here to be able to change systems. Yeah. Pray for housing to open up. We need housing in a desperate yeah. way. And we want we want a good situation. Mm-hmm. So anything else? Nope. It's too long already. Too long already. Okay. Bye. bye.